Okay, well, let's look at how to actually make a residual plot. So right here on part D, it says use your calculator to make a residual plot and then sketch it and talk about what it tells us about how well this line fits in the data. Best I remember, you are unlikely to have to do this on the AP exam, um, but there is some of the homework and it's helpful to establish this because it's possible they'd ask it. So if we go back to the data, what we'll first need to do is plug this data in the calculator just like you have for all the other problems with linear regression. So I've already done this, so just save some time. We put the first line entirely in L1, percent return that is, the second line new adults in L2. I'll show you where I've got that plugged in. So here's L1 and L2. So if I go, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, Zoom 9, does nothing because I forgot to actually show the scattered plot. So let me clear out my y equals here. That's unrelated to this problem. Go to the stat plot, second y equals, turn this plot on. The scatter plot, which is what this is right here, that's good. L1, L2. Okay, so we're ready to go. We'll hit zoom stat now and we see the scatter plot. But to do the residual plot, I have to do it a little differently. First of all, if you remember, a residual is the observed minus the expected. Okay, we have the observed y values right here in L2, but we need to figure out the expected values. That means what did the linear regression, what did the line that we got using linear regression say they thought the y value would be at all these x values? So I'm going to hit stat, calc, and then do my linear regression. And I'm going to store that regression equation. Um, uh, I'm going to store that regression equation in Y1. Okay, so there is the linear regression right there. There's my Y intercept, there's my slope. So in my opinion, the simplest way back here in your data to get the expected value is to go over to L3, go up to L3, and then hit enter. Because what we want it to do is to plug all these x values in L1 into the linear equation we just got from the regression. So again, I went up to L3 and hit enter so I can tell it what to do for the entire list. I go to vars, then y vars, and y1, and then I put parentheses and tell it L1, second one. So what this is saying is I want it to take all the values in L1 and plug them into y1. So that's why I had to make sure I stored that regression equation in y1, because I wanted it to just plug these points into y1 for me. Then I just hit enter, and it does that all for me. And now I have all the expected values, all the expected counts, expected values is probably what I want, um, for this data. So now in L2, I have the observed counts for each of these, and in L3, I have the expected. So to get the residual, I'll go over to L4, go up to where it says L4, and hit enter. The residual is always the observed, in this case is L2, minus the expected, which is in L3. I tell it I want this entire list to be composed of L2 minus L3, hit enter. So now I have the residuals in L4. So this gives me the residuals for all of them individually. So if I want to do a residual plot, I want to plot the same x values I did before, L1, but instead of plotting L2 as my Y values, I want to plot my residuals, L4, as my Y values. So I go back to stat plot, and when I go into my plot, I have to change it so that the Y list is L4 instead of L2, because I want the residuals. So I'm using the same X values, but different Y values. I'm going to hit quit, 
and hit zoom nine again because it'll be a different plot than it was before. And I see the residual plot. So as far as interpreting this, we can say they're all relatively small. We're not seeing any that are just sky high away or sky sky low below. That didn't make sense. But anyway, we're seeing none that are incredibly far away from the x-axis. And there's no clear pattern. Um, there's no clear curve one direction or the other. So this is well scattered, which means it's a good fit. Now I want to show you one way you can do this even a little bit quicker. The way I showed you works. But the calculator is very kind to us. So when you go into L1 and L2, you do still have to plug all that in. Let's just clear this out. Doing that by going up to L3 and L4, hitting clear, and then enter. So instead of having to find all the observed, or excuse me, find all the expected by using the linear regression, the calculator actually has that for you. So if you look right above the stat button, it says list. But actually, I'm getting one step ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Go up to L3, hit enter. Now we're going to plug something into L3. Hit second stat, which is sending us to list. And behold, number eight, right down there, is the residual. I hit enter, and it has all the residuals plugged in there for me. So if I go to the stat plot now, I just need to change my Y list to L3. Hit zoom nine, and I see the exact same residual plot. So that's the way to make a residual plot in your calculator.